Today we're going to be testing out the Brennicky Super Sabo shotgun round. Hello, this is Jeff of Tal Flitter Mouse. We've had the pleasure of testing out 12 gauge ammo, not just from the USA, but from different parts of the world. One of Officer Greg's viewers sent several boxes of these Brennicky Super Sabos to him. Greg thought it would be more suitable to demonstrate these on my channel. So I did a little horse trading and gave him a box of 45 ammo that a viewer had sent me, since that would be more suitable for his channel. First, let's take a closer look at some of the specs of these unique German imports. The Brennicky Super Sabo is a revolution in Sabo technology that produces exceptional accuracy and devastating power up to 100 yards plus. The slug is made out of brass with an aluminum spike core. Really cool looking slug. The slug weighs in at 1 and 1 8 ounce and has a muzzle velocity of around 1400 feet per second. Now the slug is designed only for fully rifled shotgun barrels. In other words, it needs spin stabilization. Well, let's pop the hood and see what makes this very unusual slug tick. So what we have is a custom wad made specifically for this round that resembles a field wad. The petals of the, the sabos are actually quite thick on this. So let's take a closer look at the slug. At first glance, the slug looks like something Evan Perry designed, to be honest, right? And what's really unique about this slug, it's made out of three different pieces of metal. You have a plunger in the back, kind of a cylinder in the middle, and a, an aluminum core. So when you fire this thing, the plunger pushes forward and extends the aerodynamic aluminum tip out the front. And it, to me, it reminds me of the inlet spike on an SR-71 engine. Not sure why it was designed this way, but it's definitely unique. Now the box, you probably noticed, and on the shell it says Brennicky USA. But when we examine the powder, which is uh, greenish and kind of square flaked, uh, that is not an American powder. That's probably made by Noble Sports, I believe out of Italy. Europeans would probably know better than me, but that makes me believe that the entire loaded shell was imported from Germany. Now the guy that sent these to Greg emailed him almost weekly asking if we had shot these things yet. We finally got a day where it was cool enough that we thought we could shoot these. It was about 92 degrees and this is down from about 105 degrees. Now shooting in 105 degree weather is miserable enough but it's also very hard on the high speed camera. It starts glitching out and probably shortens the lifespan of the camera quite a bit. But this week, it's only going to get hotter all the way up to 109 degrees. Oof. But filming at 92 degrees in the shade was actually quite pleasant. First, we're going to take some 50-yard yeah, test shots with the fully rifled Benelli Nova. And looks like it hit on the R of Ralphie. See where it hit? Way low. Fuck. And that one was tumbling. I can see it hit a sheet of cardboard. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. It was right. Here we go. Okay, let's take a look at our results. This was where Greg was aiming right there. Now, shot number one with the Benelli Nova landed a little bit to the right. Not terrible. Greg made a little adjustment to the scope. And the next slug was right there. And you can see a key hold. Greg switched to his Remington 870 with iron sights. First shot, not too bad, a little to the right. But his next shot was really high and to the right. Lesson learned, if you're shooting at an alien at 50 yards, it would have walked away. So is Greg just a terrible shot? Let's see. No matter what I do, I cannot make the high-speed camera lie to you guys. And without the high-speed camera, we probably would never have been able to diagnose what the heck was going on. In all of our test shots, the slugs are just tumbling out of control. And honestly, it was amazing he was able to hit the cardboard at all. Now, some of you may have spotted some indications that we had some problems going on. Now, this camera shot tells the full story. As you can see, the plastic wad is completely blown apart. Now, what we don't know is, are we getting excessive pressure spikes or is the plastic wad just weak? Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Oh, he hit him. He 
you can hunt more than at 12 yards with it. Now we went as far as putting the shells on ice to try to cool them off. But as you can see, the results were still pretty dismal. Here we go. I don't even know where that went. I was planning on showing you guys some beautiful 100 yard shots on a water jug with these things, but we never got there. Oh, what did they pull that off? I don't know. They, did they change something? Okay, let's, let's take another shot. All right, at the aubergine. aubergine. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. There we go. This was probably one of the most frustrating video shoots I've ever done. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. It looked like it hit left to me. Yeah, I sure did. Greg had difficulty just hitting these targets that were only about 12 yards away. Okay, I'm ready. At least we're able to show you guys the clear ballistic rabbit, which you can buy. Uh, I think it's like $37 for that thing. Really cool target though. Okay, I'm ready. There we go. And on this shot, you can see that we actually got a little bit of water on the slug itself, which left a neat vapor trail. Greg also brought out his Beretta 1301 semi-automatic shotgun. It's smooth bore. We have nothing to lose by trying these slugs out of that though. Let's see how that does. Well, the slug did about as well through a smooth bore as it did through rifling. Imagine that. Okay, I'm ready when you are. Let play. Going left, but kind of in there. Not bad. Well, we went back to full rifling and the results are about the same. Is it possible that this ammo just cannot handle 92 degree temperatures in the shade? Well, we tried one more experiment. Okay, so Clear Ballistics, you might have seen from the last video, sent Jeff out a whole bunch of Clear Ballistics products, including a rabbit and a squirrel and what else did they send you a, a, or a, a block of gel that is like 50 pounds it's, yeah. it's huge but one of the coolest things that they sent out and you got to think uh, about where they might have got this idea they now have this gigantic um what's the weight of this thing i think 12 pounds it's pretty heavy big gigantic gummy bear here's your typical size gummy bear shotgun shell just for scale one giant ballistic gummy, what we call the BFG. So uh, <laughs> let's give it a try and see if we can get some of these Brennickies to hit him somewhere. Here we go between the paws. Oh, we got him, I think. Oh, we got him, I think. So this was about the same 12 yards-ish. Hit, I was aiming right between the bear paws, hit right between the bear paws. Um, it appeared to have hit square on, right? It, it was flying straight as an arrow, that one. That was the one we cooled down with ice water. Finally, finally, we get one that functions properly. That's how it's supposed to work. And even the wad wasn't all mangled up this time. That's a good sign too. So in order to make this slug work properly, we dunked the entire shell up to the roll crimp in ice water for about 10 minutes. So that hardened up the plastic a little bit, but I also think that the powder they use is very heat sensitive. It'll shoot in normal pressures at say 60 degrees Fahrenheit, but if you bring it up to 90 degrees, it, it just creates a huge pressure spike that the wad cannot handle. Now I don't know of any uh, slug made in the United States that suffers the same problem, and we've seen it before, with the deduplex slugs that we tested a few years ago. I never imagined we'd see this problem at only 92 degrees in the shade. It's not like the guns are cooking out in the sun. I would have greatly preferred to have tested these in much cooler conditions, but like I said, Greg kept telling me that the guy who sent the slugs kept emailing him and wanting us to test these things. And unfortunately, this is the results we got. Ugh. Only by sheer luck, we were able to get one to function properly. Yeah, I don't, 
Did we get a defective batch? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We got like four or five boxes of them. Yeah, so I'm one, sure it's all mixed and everything, but one wouldn't think. In fact, their lot numbers are printed on the inside. Same lot, same lot, same, same lot. So yeah. I don't know. I don't think that's it. Germans are usually pretty good about uh, their manufacturing processes, but I don't know. It's tough to tell if it's the temperature or if it's actually just the round or our shotguns. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Put your thoughts down here below. I posited the idea that, I don't know, maybe our shotgun barrels are hot and they've expanded, allowing a little bit of slippage in that Sabo. They're, they're in the shade, though. That's yeah, the thing. I know. It's and, not, and, it's... and barrels get hot. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I don't, and remember, we fired this cold bore, the very first shot. Yeah. Two shotguns that came out of an air-conditioned truck, and the very first one hit way lower. Yeah, it, right. it tumbled. So I don't know. I don't know, Bernard. But either way, thank you for sending these out. It made an interesting video. And uh, even if they fail, they're sometimes fun to watch. Factory rounds, you know, sometimes when you buy a factory round off the store shelf, you think this is about as perfect as it's going to get. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this one, but I'm sure you guys will tell us down here in the comment section that we should hook them together with a wire, <laughs> tie them together with string, strap down the targets, shoot to the left, put a uh, tarp down. Uh, my solution, when I get home, I'll, I'll take one apart and analyze and see how they measure up and everything. All right. I think a, a wrap of electrical tape would fix these. All right. Well, you put the eyes back and analyze. Yep. All right. Well, we thank you guys for stopping by anyway. We're going to pack up our hot little camp out here and head back into town. And Jeff's going to take this one apart for you. Yep. And show you what's inside. See ya. Goodbye. Now, even though we are pretty confident that it's a heat issue causing the problem with these, I did measure the Sabo and we measured 0.735 inches. And that's a nice snug fit in the barrel. <sighs> Still a very frustrating video to film, but I hope you enjoyed watching it and we'll see you next time.